<sighs> All right, let's get this edit going. See how these files be looking. Okay. All right, let's pull up the Scott file and see how that sounded. Cleaner. Yep, already did that. Give it a listen. What the f Well, hey guys, what's going on here? River Sullivan coming at you right here, right now. Pre-recorded for your live listening pleasure for another episode of This Evening Tonight. Joining here with me here yet again, the silver fox of sultry hand rubbins right now as he's lubing his hands vigorously with a pump of Germex. The good shit. I can smell that America from here. My friend and co-host, Scott. What it do? So what's going on? Same old, same old, man. Yeah. So we do have uh, this week, though. We are drinking more of the good shit. Some of that delicious Swedish toot toot, known as Javalia. G e v a l i a. How do you pronounce this, Scott? Javalia. Javalia. <laughs> that's, that's how I say that's it. It's a little bit extra <laughs> redneck on that. I like it. Uh, we are drinking the just their mild traditional roast. Nothing fancy. Hundred percent arabica coffee, like their website says. Experience the best of our Swedish heritage. These traditional blends are expertly crafted for a one-of-a-kind taste that rules. Now, the traditional roast, uh, they're talking about how it's just heady aromas, and they, 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 they say it has a perfect balance and middle intensities, bodies, and, acid, uh, and acidities, utilizing East African, Central American, and South American beans. Now, this is still not the top coffee. No. I don't know what it is. It's it up is, there. It's nothing has knocked the Neebs coffee off of its throne. But this stuff is, is actually very good. It, it's uh, legit. When I ran it through the French press, I forgot how finely ground it was. Mm -hmm. Like it's, I was like, ooh, espresso. And I probably used tablespoons, not, or I'm sorry, teaspoons. I used teaspoons worth of grounds in this. Like it was very minimal, but such full bodied flavor. This would be somewhere behind the Lobaza. That's still what's happening right now. You mother, <laughs> please tell me no. Did he just cat demon? What do you do? I heard him peeing. Yes, <laughs> where is it? Where is it? I, I heard it. I know you did it. How is how? How? Where? Oh, and we're back because cat Damon attempted to pee in the office. Sorry. Oh, God damn it. Find somewhere else to pee. Oh, God. You know, I don't know where Arabica is, but they make some mighty good coffee. Yes. No, this is it's not quite as good as the Lavaz of the Neves, but it, it's pretty good. Doing all right over there. Mm -hmm. I just keep looking for the pee. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're messed up, man. Not, yeah, he, God. Killed the mojo of the show right now. <laughs> God damn cat Damon. Why? Why? I gave him everything he wants. Because I, I just changed his litter. I just did that. I'm like, and it's the good shit. Oh, cats. I'm not going to hurt the cat. Don't worry. Nobody worry. God. He's establishing his dominance. <laughs> anyway, I'm just saying, like, back to this coffee. This coffee was amazing. So. Let's hear the numbers. It is that time, guys, yet again for our weekly update slash week behind on the numbers here. For our coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic daily tracker. U.S. based, uh, I'm sorry, total confirmed cases. We'll stick with that right now. Total confirmed, 4,947,929. Uh, 4, Global deaths at 324,872. Out of the 4.9 million total confirmed cases, the United States contains 1.5 million, 1 million 537,584 total confirmed cases with 92,387 deaths in the U.S. Coming in now at second place, though, is Russia that has just exploded. They're already up to 308,000. They had next to nothing for a while and then just boom. But 
I mean, they're they're still uh, they're spiking because they're going through their initial phase of it. Uh, the U.S. were finally it's it's a slow going spike, but everything's still going down. The numbers have gotten so much lower. I'm so happy right now. It's it's we're getting there. We're still getting there. It's still so slow. I say that every week. We're making it. We're still doing the right thing. Uh, as long as we continue to do the right thing, I believe we're doing a little bit of some overkill here. Uh, but we'll talk about that here later on in the show because that actually there is an important announcement coming up here about that. And that is all for your numbers of the COVID-19 this week, guys. So if you want to look at any more of that, we'll include the uh, link in the description below for the John Hopkins Coronavirus Resource Center's update. You seem exhausted. No, I'm just coming down off Cat Damon <laughs> doing Cat Damon things. He was being a real Mick asshole. Blood pressure bottoming out. So let's see when this episode comes out. Yeah, that's right there on the day. When this episode comes out, guys, uh, we'll just go ahead and cut to the chase on this. So this most likely will be the last episode that I'm going to have here uh, for our person to person inside the office where I actually have somebody in the office because I... Get to go into quarantine. Quarantine! Quarantine! <laughs> so the day that this comes out will be the day that I pretty much go into quarantine. The reason behind that being, I do not have the Rona. Scott does not have the Rona. Uh, my significant other, she and I and Scott are also, we are essential employees outside of here. We're labeled as first responders, if you uh, will. We uh, won't go any further into that, just, you know, privacy's sake. But she had to go somewhere that was deeply affected by the Corona and has been there now for by the time, uh, when this episode airs, that will be the day that she comes back and that'll be two weeks that she'd been gone. So when that happens, she gets to go into quarantine. Since we live together, I have to quarantine with her. And so the plan is if I can swing it, I just had everything hardwired here. Internet wise, nothing's running wirelessly in terms of my connection to where We'll try to do the show remotely. Like I might have Scott over Skype or something, and then I can record that. Uh, the audio quality will be diminished, so please bear with us on that. We're making the adjustments as needed here on the show just to keep it rolling. If for whatever reason I can't or we can't do any kind of a actual show while I'm stuck here in quarantine, uh, I have plans to do some live streaming. Uh, it might be something uh, that we'll just do maybe live stream some gameplay, uh, where I sit down and play a game for a while. Uh, but I do have plenty of hobby things already set up here for the quarantine. Scott saw it, went to uh, the Michael's Arts and Crafts store and bought a bunch of uh, canvases and paint. So maybe we'll do like a like a Bob Ross thing, but like River, River Sullivan and his happy trees. That would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> There's just glorious mistakes. Happy accidents. <laughs> no, it's glorious mistakes. <laughs> glorious chaos. Hmm. Yeah, I, I don't think I bought enough paint, though, for all those canvases, so it'll be funny trying to create paint when I don't have any. I got a lot of brown paint outside in, in buckets and or, you know, cans. There's one gallon cans for shit. I think there's pink, too, as well. Start getting creative. Do, like, some, like, nature collages and stuff, you know. Get your hot glue gun. Look, do you know how, do you know how much fucking canvases cost? They're ridiculous. Those are the bulk packs that I bought, and I guess they're just the cheap of the cheap cheaps. Just it was like a seven pack of these eight by twelve ones for ten ninety nine. All the bulk packs like that were ten ninety nine each. But then I was looking at other ones. It goes, oh, it's the good stuff, blah blah blah. But they were like twenty nine dollars for one canvas, and that's like like a portrait size. I mean, I couldn't justify that. I looked and went, ooh, bargain bin. <laughs> Oh, I'm looking forward to this quarantine, uh, and also I'm not. I'm kind of jealous. I'm not going to lie. I don't know, man. I'm, I like being able to go out and do things. Um, like today, just had to go to the grocery store, but I had to do it in a sequential planned event just because of everything I do to get ready. And now I'm not going to have that at all. Like I've already contacted members of my family and then, you know, like other people. And I, I'm certain if I asked you, you'd probably hook me up with something, you know, if we ever needed anything, but I think that we're good. I think we've stocked up now sufficiently. I got plenty of coffee. Um, 
I mean, I could always bring you something and forget you're in quarantine, and then I would obviously have to be in quarantine. <laughs> <laughs> now I got a sign that we got to put up on the door. And uh, oh, you got the red letter. <laughs> <laughs> the black spot. <laughs> Yeah, new. It's uh, so bittersweet. God, the think of all the gaming you can do. Ah, uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> it's precious. Enjoy it. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna enjoy. Trust it. Trust me. I just, I there's half of me that looks forward to it, and the other half that's like, what if she actually brings it back and I get it? And you know, well, I, you have a ninety nine point nine percent chance of living. So yeah, true. But I also have 99.9% bad luck. Like, if I didn't have bad luck, I'd have, I'd, 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 I'd have no luck at all. Coffee. But the one thing that I will say is an upside for me is we own land. Like, if we were in town having to be quarantined, that would suck. Like, yeah. you really would be in prison. We have two and a half acres over here on Casa de Sully where I could go outside. I think I might cut my grass every day. <laughs> Just every damn day. Just, just burn brush. That's always fun. I don't have any, I don't really have any. I mean, I do have brush to burn, but we also live right next to a state forest. And I don't want to be in quarantine and then responsible for the great <laughs> don't be that state guy. forest, you know, West Virginia state forest fire, uh, wildfire of 2020. That would be the next thing. Be like, thanks, 2020. What's next? Yep. Oh, River Sullivan burned down a state forest. No, thanks. That kind of puts me in mind. Like, I, one thing I, I, I've noticed going out here lately in my travels is like we've kind of like switched gears. As a society, I think locally anyway, with this lockdown, quarantine, whatever you want to call it. What do you mean? Well, I've noticed a lot of like the grocery stores and, you know, places like that have kind of, I mean, they're still doing the social distancing and you still see people with masks, but they're, the business has picked up mm -hmm. a little bit to where it's more like normal, not just like you go in and it's a ghost town. Yeah. And you don't get those suspicious looks for wearing a mask. Everybody's wearing them now. They're all, yeah. now people are wearing stylish ones. I mean, I don't, but you know. I'm not scared. I shouldn't say that. <laughs> it's not a matter of fear. It's a matter of just trying to be, well, it's uh, no, hang on. It's not a matter of fear. It's uh, to me, it's a matter of, for whatever reason, what if I'm one of those carriers that's asymptomatic and never shows any symptoms? Like whether I pick it up because I'm an O positive blood type. O, o blood types are more resilient. Right. Which I am. So I would just like, I'm not worried about me getting sick. I'm worried if that's the fact then, and like if I'm a carrier and I don't even know it, that the surgical masks that we wear, I just try to keep other people from getting it if I'm one of those guys that has it. I don't think I have it, but. I understand that in principle. It's just precautionary. But here's my thought on that. Obviously, this hasn't reached the same level of lethality that the seasonal flu does. Mm -hmm. Do you wear a mask during flu season? I kind of sometimes wonder, you know, but then there's is, also the flu has been around for a while. Like we have built so, up immunities to those strains. So coronaviruses. Yeah, but this is not they, this particular this is a one, novel coronavirus, meaning there's never been one like it. But what's the end game? They're saying this will never be over or we'll never get back to a new normal, whatever that is. No, I mean, there's never a new normal. Whenever no, 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 I'm saying big. The, they're trying to say this is our new normal. We'll never get back to normal if ever. Which is crazy, I think, in my mind. Well, I mean, that was the thing after 9-11. Till we get either a vaccine mm -hmm. or herd immunity, which I know that a lot of people say that's a, a dangerous term right now, but I, that's what I think. Uh, Ultimately, that's what's happening now anyway. I mean, the whole point. Like, people are doing their best to make sure they don't get infected or infect anyone else. I would say most people are most people are doing their best. There's still people that are being real McAssholes about it. Like, oh, let's go to have, let's have a party. Like. Yeah, I mean, like, I, I believe in being cautious and taking precautions, especially at the beginning of this. But from what I understand, like, my ignorant grasp on things is the whole point of the lockdown was to slow the spread of it, not necessarily stop it. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, there was no stop. So yeah. it doesn't overwhelm the hospital systems. Mm -hmm. But what happened was, is, like, they came nowhere near being over capacity. Actually, they were quite empty and losing money. So yeah. it, it, at some point, like, where are we going with this? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it's not that I'm intentionally, like, if I did have it, like, I tested positive, obviously. I, one, I wouldn't go out, and two, I wouldn't wear a mask. But I don't feel like I need to need one to go to the grocery store. No, and, and like I said, devil's advocate here for that, too, is um, you might not need it, but I wear it for other people that need 
protection from it. You know what I mean? Said I don't. I personally, I don't believe I need to wear the mask because I know that my immune system is very strong. I don't. I don't really get sick. And it's very seldomly. Last time I was sick, it was Lyme's disease, and <laughs> and that was a real thing. Like that's I've found the tick on me, and it bullseyed <laughs> and everything. Went to the to the Med Express. They cooked it out of me with the drugs. But I know that my immune system is pretty strong because I'm right. Still, like we're in that age group where we're the pretty much the highest probability of survival and un- and not being infected. So it's me wearing it for the protection of people that don't have those good immunities. Like I said, if I was asymptomatic and a carrier, I don't want to think that I'd be the reason because I chose not to wear it because I know I don't need it, but it's not for me. It's for those other people that don't have as good of an immunity or as good of an immune system. I do that to protect them. Like I know I walked in the store today because I had to do all that grocery shopping at like four different places. And everywhere I went, put the mask on, get in the car, disinfect my hands, disinfect my steering wheel, take my mask off, and go. And I did that four different times in the period of like two hours. But it wasn't, like I said, it wasn't for me. It was for all the elderly people I see still out there trying to get their grocery shopping done and people out there still trying to live their lives that don't have that, that, those uh, immunities. I understand that, and I do respect that. But my worry is like whether it's intentional or not, I'm afraid that this is – changing the way we think and how we respond to things in our reality. We're going to have to put a brief pause on this. Did he do it again? No. Something just came in the mail. (laughs) We'll be right back. I'm going to sit in here and talk to myself for a little bit. (laughs) Hey, kitty cat. What you doing down there? Staring at shadows? Shadows can be scary. Look at you with your big, big old eyes and big pupils. What you got there? All right, guys. Sorry there. We had to go run real quick it up my hill because it wasn't quick at all. Something came in. We're just going to unbox these bad boys right here. You won't be able to see them, but we'll take photos of them here and uh, probably throw it up on YouTube. Should be the first of uh, some merchandise. From the store or for our shop i took the liberty of doing a couple coffee mugs before it went live oh yeah oh yes queen oh. that truly is a work of art it's got the bubble wrap we're gonna asmr this shit oh my goodness oh yes there you go. Take a look at that, Scott. I dig it. Ordered us a couple official coffee mugs that we're going to start drinking uh, our daily or weekly update. Uh, you know, or We're going to start uh, drinking the coffee out of these in every show. Really feel official now. Ordered two of them. Should have got a third for guests, but what if? Should we disinfect these? I mean, I'm not going to use them right now. It's made in China. Oh, shit. And they got us. Pump a Germex real quick. Can't be mad at y'all like doing the same thing. <sighs> Those are beautiful. Ah, oh, feels so official right now. Real now, man. Happening. Live action. Like I always say, once you have a coffee mug, you have made it. We have. God, oh, that's. Wish it was kind of over this way. Still, I mean, fantastic. Oh, such a beautiful, peaceful sky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the coffee mug, guys, we used was the uh, panoramic. It's the panoramic coffee mug with the uh, standard background that you guys normally see. Either if you're checking us out on uh, the Sounder website. Or if you're just checking it out on YouTube or any of the other hosting sites, it's just that Starry Night with uh, This Evening Tonight written on it. And it is fantastic. I can almost hear the water slapping <sighs> I can amongst hear the, the rocks. Like if I put my ear to it, I can hear like our intro music in the background, just that piano playing. Uh. <laughs> Which, by the way, like I always, I liked it from day one, but like it grows on you. What, the intro? Yeah. You get used to it, you're like, yeah. <laughs> shenanigans it's so cheeky and fun yet classy and elegant all right what are we talking about now 
I we were I was on my Corona rant, but I'm over it. How you feeling about it? I don't know. I'm just still trying to think up uh, all the like other shit we're gonna do in quarantine. I mean, I got we're gonna do some painting. Uh, I'm probably getting, like the the fence I have at the top of my property line there. Uh, apparently, termites have been eating it because one of them looked like it had exploded. And I just like flicked it and it just fell apart and it was like a four by four piece of wood and then it just turned to powder. I went, oh, this is good. So I checked the rest of the fence line by squeezing these fence posts, these four by four fence posts. And there was like four out of the 10 that are there and you just could squeeze them. And I felt really strong just because they, because it just (laughs) crushed in my hand. I'm going, this is, this is not good because all that, like, oh, they didn't use the right wood. They didn't use the treated shit. They just left it bare and it looks like they painted it already after it had rotted. Mm-hmm. Like I was very disappointed in it. And especially what really disappointed me was that they cemented them all into the ground. Good cement and shitty wood in the ground. Makes sense. So I was looking at it. I'm going, I think and while I'm stuck here, I'm just going to rip all that fence out. I'm just going to take it all out and put a split fence in when, whenever this is over. But that fence, it gots to go. Like it's, terrible i was checking the plank boards that they had just drilled into there and i was able to pull half of them out they it was so rotten that the screws were just there as like a hanger huh. like no pressure whatsoever it was like like they were hanging photos like you're hanging a picture frame but it was that wood had just rotted so much so i'm uh, a little sad now about that but i mean that's tell you what it's so rotten though i could just kick it and probably knock it out of the ground getting that concrete out though is the issue yeah, I mean it should because it's they use so little of it. I should just be able to take a spade and dynamite. Yeah, psh. now that's if you really if like you want to dig a, a pool in Preston <laughs> County, you need dynamite with a backhoe and a jackhammer and a you know trained SEAL team to come in there and breach the ground to get everything out of it. I just remembered where I was going with this. Anyways, one thing I have noticed lately: everybody must be getting really bored because. Lowe's has been packed. Oh, Lowe's, as they said, yeah, Lowe's has been packed since all this started. I don't it's know if insane, people... insane, like... <laughs> got a lot of shit to do, a lot of time now to do projects at the house. Like, I went there and, you know, got got some few landscaping supplies and some plants, and, like, I waited in line for, like, a good solid 20 minutes, which yeah. is unheard of at Lowe's. Yeah. I do love... I, I'm I'm really, really starting to like Lowe's, though, like... As a homeowner now, <laughs> I I did the pricing and drew up plans mm-hmm. how to redo the uh, guest bathroom. Both the bathrooms need redone, but that one needs done more. And what was funny, it was actually the nicer one, in quotes, when we moved in. Just because they put bathroom finisher on the shower and tub combo that was in this place. Mm-hmm. And all bathroom finisher is is white spray paint that makes it look new that stands up to water for a little while. Well, of course. So I got to rip all that out. I'm going to rip the vanity out of there and put a new vanity, maybe a new toilet. I'd like to get one that's a little bit elongated, you know, for us full-figured men, you know, people that are above four feet, because that is like a midget toilet in there. Uh, Can we say midget? Is that derogatory now? Little people. I mean, it it is a tiny person toilet. (laughs) It's a potty. (laughs) It is is a potty. It's my poo-poo potty. (laughs) That's that's the potty. (laughs) It's not a toilet, just a potty. <laughs> oh, that just brings up a funny story. I got to go potty now, guys. A funny story that I don't know if you want to hear it, but. No, go ahead, because I was just going to tell you about remodeling a bathroom. No, go so ahead, go that, ahead. No, I mean, it's going to cost 1300 bucks to remodel a bathroom, what I what I got it down to. That's not bad. And that's, well, that's just to pay for everything. And then I didn't include the cost, though, of having to redo the floor uh, because there's laminate on there right now. And I'm pretty sure they put laminate on top of laminate. I mean, why would it's you? an Oreo fuck of like grout <laughs> and, and sticky shit that it's going to be a lot of fun to rip up. And then when you take the tub shower combo out, cause I'm putting a corner shower. So we free up the space so we can have like a nice towel rack and shelving in there. Uh, apparently there's some kind of water membrane I got to put down and yeah. by membrane, it's like this papery rubbery shit. That's expensive as hell. I talked to one of my brothers and he said it was gonna be like a thousand bucks just for that membrane. I'm like, can I just use a tarp? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like <Flex> seal. <laughs> I got a bunch of that. I, come on. I'm going to put up splash guard, not tile, but it's those panels, those glass panels that look like tiles. 
And they're just, they call it peel and stick, but apparently they stand up really well. Well, I mean, anytime you improve either your kitchen or your bathroom, from what I hear, that adds a lot of value to your house. So worthwhile investment. Yeah, that's my understanding because the owners, the previous owners did everything to this house, but improved the bathrooms and the office. Like the office was a th- that we're sitting in was the third bedroom and it was hideous. Like having all this soundproofing or the sound foam put up in the whole room. Uh, actually, this room looks way better than what it was looking like. And I still got more soundproofing to put up. I feel like you need some decorative items. Yeah, I some, do. Like I mood do. lighting or something. Oh, there's going to be some mood lighting. Like some patio lights. <laughs> mm. so I'll have, we'll put up uh, some tiki torches in here, you know. <laughs> Just breathe in that citronella air. <sighs> <laughs> so anyway, your your story you were going to tell I, I'm, me. I'm debating. On, like, I don't even know if it's appropriate for a podcast, but. It's a podcast. Anything's appropriate. <laughs> All right. So I was at the job. This has been a while back. I don't even know if I might have told you this story already. So <clears throat> I had to go next door to the alternative bathroom mm. for the constitutional, if you know what I mean. Yeah. And, the uh, numero dos. So I take care of business there and I, I finish up and I kind of give myself a courtesy flush and I'm still there. And I don't know if you remember when we were having issues with water pressure. Yes. <laughs> when they cranked it up. <laughs> so I had a first in a lifetime experience while I'm sitting there. Like a bidet. Oh, even better. Ball washer. Yeah. Power washer. Pressure <laughs> so I'm sitting there and all of a sudden I hear this loud roar when I give myself the courtesy flush. I'm perplexed you know I'm like what is happening right now <laughs> next thing i know there is literally a geyser shooting up from between my legs arcing over going down and hitting my pants that are around my ankles in my boots and there was like a lake of water just beginning right there at my feet and I mean, what else do you do i started laughing at myself because like at that point what can you do like i need pants i need my backup pants <laughs> you're already wet you're already there what are you, you gonna waddle out of the stall naked <laughs> Get some of them sweet, like, government-issue brown paper towels. I was like, only here this would happen. Uh. <laughs> I remember when one of those blew out at work, and it blew the porcelain out yes, of the back it, of it. It was, it was that morning, like, after that. And somebody told us about it, and we went and checked on it, and we called, like, these plumbing guys, and they came over to look at it, and they said, uh, they all stood back, like, 40 feet and asked me, hey, uh, Sullivan, will you just, you just give that a flush for us, will you? Why don't, aren't you guys plumbers? Nah, man, you got it. Oh, okay. So I flush it, and the porcelain had blown out the back of the rim, and then that's apparently where, like, those industrial toilets, like, where all the water goes, could uh-huh. come down into the bowl. So since there was no longer, like, a bracket to diffuse that water into the bowl itself, it was just uninterrupted, and it just, the only thing, the only term that makes sense was this toilet puked water, uh-huh. like, just, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> like, and that's almost what it sounded like, it just... For like just three feet, and it was like gallons and gallons of water instantly. Not really pressurized, but it was like a heavy flow in a river. Like it just blah, 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 blah. just came out. And went, oh my god! I kind of joked with him, said, "Hey, you know, we can just leave that because I mean, it's not really high pressure. So if you run out of TP because of all the TP shortages, you just sit on that. <laughs> but day and, and like it's from like the top of the crack down through the gooch." Like wash, like like, and it's just ooh, like I feel like you have to take your pants off and hang them up. Oh, absolutely. Shoes, socks, everything off from the waist down, and then hold on to the rails and then stick your feet straight out in front of you and just like hit it. I mean, that's pretty much the gist of it. Like, I mean, that geyser was coming chest high. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you're sitting there just like shut Inst- up, yeah, like. Hey, what's well, the up? instant <laughs> sensation was like, you know, obviously it hit the boys. I was like, whoa, whoa, what's happening? Oh, oh. I look at it and it's like pulsing, like. <laughs> what the water was pulsing? Or? Yeah, like the oh. geyser was like. It's like what was pulsing? No, <laughs> I was Not, slightly no. aroused by the water. No, I was too shocked for that. <laughs> oh, 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 all right. <laughs> by the time I looked down and saw my drenched pants, I just. What do you do? Just laugh at yourself. You're like, how am I going to explain this to everybody in the office? <laughs> it's cool, man. Everybody pees their, all the cool kids pee their pants. <laughs> Drenched. <laughs> so you, I'm guessing you walk back in all soggy. 
It wasn't real bad. Like mainly it was this the uh Wonderoos that got drenched. Uh oh like, that's I kinda lifted my pants there midway through it, but yeah, my boots and whatnot did get soaked. What'd you do with you just put the underwear back on and Hey man, I ain't scared. Uh, I just hmm. I just you know, the humidity, man, I just think about the chafage, you know. Well, this was you know, it's probably been a month or so ago. Okay. So it wasn't, you know, hot at all. It, it was that same time about, oh. yeah. Speaking of it not being hot, you know, it's only barely 60 degrees today. And I found out the reason for that. 2020 has another trick in store for us in from May into June. The sun has now entered its, uh, like its low state. Solar minimum. Solar minimum. Yeah. It's like in shutdown. <laughs> yeah. They're going, the sun is on lockdown right now. I said, oh, Great. Social distancing. <laughs> so I guess there's been no sunspots or solar flares for like almost the whole month. They said there's been like zero activity in the sun. The solar flares and the sunspots kind of help generate that heat around this time of year when it's supposed to be a little bit more active. And it is not. Uh, they said we're going to be experiencing cold. And uh, they're pretty sure, again, using that that scientific term, pretty sure, that it shouldn't cause any problems, oh, I don't know, like famine. Because if there isn't substantial or sufficient heat, you can't grow your crops right throughout the whole planet. So that's one thing they're looking at because uh, they're pretty sure, again, but not 100% that a famine might or might not happen. I said, well, why not? Thank God I got a bunch of coffee saved up and we have two little boxes of canned goods. <laughs> Golden. If 2020 is going to turn into The Road, I'm going to, oh, have you ever seen that movie, The Road? Yes. With Viggo Mortensen? Yeah. About like the end of the world, how there's no food and people just, nobody trusts anybody. And that movie was like almost three hours of just dread. It was just despair and dread and sadness for over two hours. That's all you feel in this movie. Like I, I left that movie, I didn't know if I wanted to cry or be like, I just got to find a high building and just end it. Cause this is going to like, this is what we got in, in store for us. I don't think things are that bad. I think I don't, I, I don't think it'll get that bad either. Cause I still have hope in people. I still have hope that if something bad happens, people will pull and pull together. That's I, what we need. I mean, it's probably a legit concern, but I think they over inflate these threats, not to dismiss it, but same thing with the meat shortage. Yeah. It's good. It's good for the, uh, Good for the news outlets, you know, good for the ratings. Yeah. Like got to put the sizzle reel when, out there. <laughs> when actually the meat industry right now is saying they're probably still on track to have a record harvest year because they, they have stockpiles. Like they keep this stuff in huge freezers. Now the caveat to that is like, I guess fresh beef is kind of getting hard to come by, which is the reason why a lot of Wendy's probably are having a hard time finding hamburger right now. Really, Wendy's? Oh, yeah, yeah I've heard they, that. Like some, they always, yeah, they do yeah. Uh, advertise that fresh, never frozen beef. Yeah, do you remember when like Wendy's and McDonald's and they were like at war? I didn't know they still weren't. Well, I, I remember like when it. I know they troll each other. I mean, they they trolled each other before Twitter and everything, where it was yeah. like it was just a commercial thing. So it was late nineties, early two thousands, and they were just commercials were coming out. Yeah, I remember that. But it would be like, oh, well, we have round burgers the way they're supposed to be round. And Wendy's is like, square burger. Make more. it square, man. We got more meat. Suck it, bitch. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> on, like Wendy's, though, whoever is running their Twitter page, brutal. Savage. Like, I don't know who. It's, <laughs> it's got to be a team of people. If it's one person, that person is a friggin' god. The amount, the amount of just savagery that, like, they just roast people all the time. I could see them having, like, a think tank just for responses <laughs> just a bunch of douches <laughs> yeah we want to make people feel bad but still enjoy our burgers because we are threatening <laughs> like, yeah. like if somebody said i'm wendy's and yeah like mm. wendy's is not going to be the ginger girl you see on there like i feel like she's going to be like she plays like roller derby and she's kicking ass and taking names she's doing like trucker arm wrestling contests like over the top you know i'm wendy's bitch just <laughs> you want to eat this beef yes yes i do ma'am Please give, I will eat any burger you put in front of me. It is delicious. Please, ma'am, may I have another? There's other things going on in space, apparently. I mean, I know news-wise we're getting ready to launch the new SpaceX rocket that's going to the International Space Station, first official mission of the United States Space Force. But then there was also something that you were telling me about earlier. 
Well, there have been reports of a UFO incident in Brazil, and I highly suggest we watch the YouTube video. Okay, guys, we're going to check this out here. We will include a link in the description below for this video, so if you guys want to check it out, you can as well to know what it is that uh, we're kind of reacting about here. Oh, my God. Okay, so we're back. So we looked at uh, some video footage here. Let's see, that is dated May 19th. That was just yesterday. From the Hollywood Breakdown TV and Movie Scenes YouTube channel. I will include a link in the description below here. It's a uh, 14 minute, uh, four, almost 14 and a half minute video. We went through a few minutes of it here and looked at it. And uh, okay. What's your thoughts? The first thing, like it's a lot of TikTok videos in there that people were, were taking of it. And it's a lot of cell phone footage, of course. The first one, good God, there's, I cannot believe that. I have a hard time, like my brain looking at that. I'm going, that's somebody using some kind of video editor and Hollywood and the shit out of it. If it's real, good God. Like, because uh -huh. the effect on it, if it's fake, the effect on it was amazing. I mean, honestly. And for it to be done on, on a TikTok video with that amount of effect, I'm having a hard time wrapping my brain around that. Um, I'm not saying it's real or not real. I'm just saying it's an interesting video. So, yeah, this is apparently in accordance with this uh, video footage from, uh, I guess, yesterday or day before. There was an apparent UFO crash in Brazil a couple days ago. And there were military helicopters in, in, in several of these videos. And it looked like military aircraft was engaged with whatever this unknown was. They're saying they shot it down. At yeah. Least that's what some of... What the internet is saying, the internet of things. I mean, hell, there's, I'm, I'm just looking on uh, some of the associated stuff that's on YouTube next to it. They had <laughs> Iran intercepted a UFO a week ago. I find this a little strange considering the fact that just, what is it, today, I believe, that we're launching rockets already to the International Space Station on, like, ASAP through the Space Force. I do believe we just saw, sent the X-37 up, too. Yeah, space is getting real busy all of a sudden, and then now we're getting videos like this. Oh, God, I just... <laughs> <laughs> now you're starting to get paranoid, aren't you? Not really paranoid, but you know what? 2020 just keeps... Your brain you know, can't the, process it, the, right? <laughs> the hits keep coming here, 2020. I mean, my God. I'm I'm glad I got my, you know, my supplies built up, and I got my defensive abilities constructed. I don't know how good it's going to do against anything like that, but... <laughs> oh, I'm, what if that's real, though? What if that's real? What do you think? What if? I, 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 like, let's say that this is real and it's 100%. I always believe that that kind of thing is always possible. You know, I'll never count that out of the realm of possibility. I mean, who knows if that video is actually real. It was pretty impressive. It was very impressive to the point where it kind of scared me a little bit. Like, oh, God, if this is real. So devil's advocate, it's real. How are you feeling? Confused. <laughs> anxious <laughs> yeah my oh. god because they also said there was uh in brazil there was cell towers went dead like that's like a blackout whether it was intentional or unintentional if it was an intentional blackout is like we got to shut down the shut down the the data shut down the net real quick well we the word is that on this. the word is is like youtube and reddit have been deleting a lot of the information they've been putting out on this how true that is i don't know i didn't really research it that much but the story was that they that they shot this thing down, and some of the eyewitness reports were saying, well, not eyewitness, locals were reporting that they heard gunshots following the crash, and they heard breaching charges. Yeah, there was a lot of boom boom going on in in some of these videos, and apparently, like they're claiming the U.S. military was coordinating with the Brazilian military, and one of the posts even went so far as to say they tracked a military flight or maybe when a military, like a government flight from DC all the way down to Rio, Rio de Janeiro around the same time frame. So maybe we got a modern day <laughs> Roswell. I don't know. Uh, I don't, oh, I mean, if it is true, I mean, it would be good timing because a lot of people aren't going outside and looking up right now. Yeah. I mean, I mean, we are pretty vulnerable right now. My God. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. I don't want this. <laughs> I mean, I, it's not that I don't want this. I do, but to be no. able to see that in your lifetime, 
But you don't um, know if you can handle that. Though. I think I could if we knew if this was real. If it was real, I feel like we would also have a firmer grasp on how to react. Like we all hope that if something like that happens, that it's all peaceful. You know, that's, I mean, you start going through the scenarios in your head. If it was real, like how would that play out? Like would you know the government even tell us? How would they handle it? Or would they come right out and be like, you know, like an Independence Day kind of thing, like putting news reports out, hey, this is <laughs> flying over Rio de Janeiro right now, live coverage, you know? Yeah, God, like, uh, what was it, that movie uh, Signs with the, with Mel Gibson yeah. and uh, Joaquin Phoenix? I'll never forget that footage, like it was the birthday party one. Oh, and yeah. you're just sitting there, and that one just like walks across, and it wasn't that scary. It wasn't like, like the a like The actual alien, image wasn't that scary. But just like seeing it, like... Because they did it so well, like it's shot in that shitty footage that you always get. You're like, ooh. <laughs> like, like I, I puckered up, man. When I saw that, I was like, ooh. <laughs> that, yeah, that is probably one of the creepiest moments in any movie I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. And like you said, not because it was that scary. Just They just did it right. Yeah. Man, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome, sir. I mean, in other news, I mean, uh, we got merchandise now, so that's that's good. Yeah. <laughs> aliens are here but we got mugs oh god oh uh, i feel like we need to do some 2020 merchandise for the show yeah like dumpster fire 2020 <laughs> what else you got yeah <laughs> i survived the 2020 oh god <laughs> there were some other videos too that were like pretty impressive i don't no, i don't want to watch none like that <laughs> no more no more well, guys, it looks like we're all out of time here for this episode of This Evening Tonight. We hope you guys enjoyed everything that it is that we talked about. Also, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. And uh, also, if you have anything on the subject matter of what we talked about or anything that you'd like us to talk about or hit, feel free to leave that in the uh, comments section here below, usually for YouTube. But I'm pretty sure, I don't know if you can comment on any of the other outlets or not. But anyway. Don't forget all the other ways you guys can listen here to us. iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Spotify, Sounder, Google Podcasts, iTunes. And if you need a little bit of visual stimulation, check us out right there on YouTube so you can watch the BS Fireplace with your significant other while you're sitting in quarantine or hoping never to be in quarantine. But, uh, <laughs> but all right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for stopping by. And until we see you here next time, whether it be another episode or if I start doing some live streaming here during my time in quarantine, peace out. Later. The truth is out there. <laughs>